Hello, this video accompanies trig lesson 2.3 where you're finding the inverse of the trig functions and their exact values. So we first look at the sine function. I've cut and pasted these um, snippets from the textbook. You guys have access to digital textbook. Um, it's in my math lab on the left hand side. It's also available if you're looking at your question and at the bottom where it says help me solve this show me an example and textbook you could click textbook and it'll take you straight to the section that you need this particular section is section 2.3 we see the sine function is a cycle it's a wave function and we're talking about the inverse well um, we want to check to see if the inverse is actually a function so we draw a horizontal line and we see that it would touch that several times, which tells me that it is not one-to-one, -one, so it does not have an inverse. So in order to simplify our lives, and to, we restrict the domain so that we have a part of this that will pass the one-to-one -one test and will have inverses. So we restrict the domain to negative pi over two to pi over 2. Negative pi over 2 down here to pi over 2 here. So we're using quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. Now what I have here are two versions of the unit circle. This is our traditional version and this is the one you'll want to use when you're working on inverse functions. And you'll see here that um, they've labeled this negative pi over 6 and over here this is 11 pi over 6. So what they're doing is they're calculating how far backwards from 0 that you would have to go to get here. So I just want you to note that this is uh, what you'll want to use for these questions. So let me get this um, situated. We know that we're going to have to restrict the area to negative 1 half to 1 half pi. So we're going to use the exact values to find a value of theta in the interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 that satisfies the equation sine theta equals x. So this is going to be very helpful. You may want to go look this up and screenshot it on your phone. You may want to take a picture of it, print it out, whatever you need to do. But let's look at an example. It says find the exact value of sine inverse of negative 1 half, which means... I want to know where the sine is going to equal negative one half. Well, I know that sine inverse is only going to occur in these two quadrants right here. So I'm looking for negative one half, and I know sine is y over r. So I want to see where the y value is negative one half. So here it is right here. That happens at negative pi over 6. So it says here the steps that we would go through would be rewrite as sine theta equals x. And we would be saying sine of some angle is negative 1 half in the domain that we are given. Use the exact value table either from the unit circle or from here. If we go to uh, negative 1 half, we get negative pi over 6. So this is very helpful. As we move over and look, well, what about cosine? Well, the, the way you would approach the problem is the same. The difference is that cosine is restricted from 0 to pi. So when we go back to this modified unit circle, Cosine is going to be functioning here in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, right in there. So we're looking for cosine of negative square root of 3 over 2. We could use the chart, and it says it's at 5 pi over 6. If we use the unit circle, remember cosine is x over r. So we're going over here, and we're looking for an x value of negative 3 uh, square, negative square root of 3 over 2, which corresponds right here to 5 pi over 6. So whether you're using the unit circle or the chart, um, you'll get your answer there. 
And then I have in here an example for tangent, which is very much the same, tangent inverse of square root of 3. And the, using the chart, square root of 3 is at pi over 3. So that would be my answer there. That's the easiest way that I could tell you to answer those questions. Pay attention to the charts and use them as your reference. Here is a summary that includes uh, cotangent, um, inverse, cosecant inverse, and secant inverse, and I've highlighted the areas that they would be using. Um, you see that sine and tangent use the same. Cosine and cotangent use the same. These are broken. These are, are intervals that have a union, and that has to do with the fact that cosecant inverse and secant inverse are really the reciprocals of sine and cosine. So when sine or cosine are equal to zero, those values are restricted. So that's why those intervals look the way they do. So once again, in this video, I have the uh, original unit circle and the one that comes from your textbook. I encourage you to go to that textbook and scroll through and look at the examples and you can read uh, more about the explanation. I just wanted to make a quick video so that you guys would have um, would have something to uh, to look at quickly. Thank you.